What's going on YouTube? We are back in the studio. This time we are getting a more of a hands-on look at the controller. This is the Mixon 8 once again by Reloop. I talked about it in my previous video letting you know that I'm making the change to it and I'm jumping deep into the algorithm DJ ecosystem. So I have everything that I need now. It, it, it's been a while for me to make this plan and make this jump. I still use Serato and I still have other controllers and other equipment, but I know from the past experience that when I do mobile events, I'm usually using a controller and I need something professional. And that's why I made the jump as I explained in my previous video. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into mapping two of the uh, uh, controls or a couple of buttons on this controller. And then what you'll see is how easy it is. It's kind of like, it's very similar to Serato. <clears throat> what you do is you go into your settings and then you get into your mapping mode and then you press the control or whether it's a button or a knob. Um, <clears throat> um, I think maybe even some of the sliders actually, I'm not sure, I gotta look into that, but you press it and then it shows on the screen in the app what, uh, control you're trying to map and then you can go through the options of what's available so let me go ahead and start a screen recording on this ipad and i will show you how to map so what we're going to do is we're going to go click this icon in the middle for your uh, menu to come up then you go into scroll down to midi devices when you go into MIDI devices, you'll see which MIDI devices have been connected to this uh, iPad using Algorithm DJ. I don't have my launch pad connected right now, but I do have my Reloop Mixon 8 Pro. So I'll go into there, and then I'm going to, let's say for the silent cue button, I'm gonna press the silent cue, and you'll see that it moved up to the note which corresponds to that button. So now say if I go to one of my cue buttons, it'll switch to that and it's telling you, I pressed it on deck one and it's cue number five. That's what, what button I pressed. And the note, the MIDI note is C1. Once I'm in there, I can go into the actions and choose what I want it to do. I'm gonna leave that alone because I don't want to change that. I want to go back to silent cue. We are silent cue, which is note G8. And right now you'll see that it says sensor. And that's because that's what I have it programmed to. Initially, it was programmed to uh, Silent Cue. So if I go into the action menu, you can scroll up and you can see all these different actions that you can assign. So you can assign actions within the effects. You can assign actions that have to do with clearing loops and saving loops. You can also deal with your uh, different loop lengths. Um, and it really depends. So you have a lot of different functions that you can map to these buttons. Some of them don't make sense to map because it, you might have to have for every action a reaction. So if you have a one button and you just make it the, the loop half, then you'll probably need another button to correspond to make it the loop double. <clears throat> so you have to be really conscious of what you're going to use these buttons for. In my case, it just made sense. The, I could have actually kept the silent cue and left that to be my way of censoring songs. And censoring is when you have a song that has some curses and you want to bleep them out. Um, with the silent cue, it would just make the track go silent. And then when I release the button, it, the song would continue playing. It's a little bit boring. Um, so I like the censor where it actually kind of reverses the, the offending word or sound. So that's what I set it up to. So I pressed the silent cue button. It's labeled silent cue on the controller. And I would scroll to the sensor. And I believe censoring was all the way towards the bottom. Yeah, <clears throat> right here where you could have easily made that to be a backspin or a forward spin button. But I made it to be um, sensor. Then if we come down to the parameter buttons, I did the same thing. So I made, press parameter button number one. <clears throat> and I made it my Neural Mix Solo. So if we go in here, you'll see that it says it's the Neural Mix Solo, an instrumental, instrumental. That's what I'm soloing. Or if I hit button two, the parameter two, which is F2, it is Neural Mix Acapella. <clears throat> and now these actions can change depending on how you have your Neural Mix set up. When it says two channels, that means that it's separating it into uh, 
instrumental or a cappella, those two channels. If I were to go into the three channel, then I could get the drums, the harmonics, and the vocals separated. Or four channel even, you get your drums, your bass, your harmonics, and your vocals. And you can do that, especially when you are in the pad mode and you can see the different uh, separated pads because you have uh, four rows or two rows of four the buttons. So that's pretty much how I've been um, mapping this. Those are the two most important mappings that I had to make because I definitely needed to be able to jump into and out of acapellas and instrumentals <clears throat> while I'm in the Q, po the Q pad mode. And I couldn't do that with the original mapping because I'd have to go into the double tap the sampler button, go into there, activate or mute or solo, whatever stem I wanted to do and then jump back into the high Q mode just wasn't practical and it wasn't uh, making some of my transitions as seamless as they should be. So now with having the uh, instant acapella and instant uh, instrumental button mapped there, I can hit it at any time regardless of what pad mode I'm in. And the same thing goes for the sensor button as well. Now the only button I'm really trying to look into set up right now and that is the uh, crossfade effects and I'm not sure, I have to do some research on that. That will probably be a separate video once I do find it, but I wanna be able to activate the crossfade effects. Um, I'm gonna cancel out of this, get out of here, do done. But on the screen, in order to get the transition effects, you have to hit this button on the screen and enable your crossfade effects. Then you see it turn blue. And that's when you can go with your neural mix effects or even just your fade, your EQ, EQ transitions or your um, filter transitions. You can do that when you have this activated. And I like to switch between the different um, effects. There's a lot of them that uh, work well in different situations. But the key is being able to activate the crossfade effects with one of my buttons on the hardware. So the problem I'm having is that each of these buttons that I showed you how to map were dedicated to a specific deck. So if we go back in, let's get out of here. Let's go back into the settings for the MIDI devices. And you look here and say I hit uh, the silent cue. You'll notice that it says deck one. And I see that the target, the control is targeted at deck one because that's where the button that I pressed is. If I press the one on the deck two, you'll see that it switched to deck two. But if I go into target, then I get mixer. So maybe I could find a button. Let's say, let's do mic two talk over. I don't think I'll ever use mic two talk over. It's kind of an odd button to map because that button on the controller is in the top <clears throat> right corner of the mixer of the con yeah of the controller and on screen that button is right next to the crossfader but let's see if we can do that let's go to talk to talk over it's listed as unconfigured it's note nine so it's not midi map for anything yet so let's change it to mixer and let's go to action and let's see if we can find crossfader effects toggle there it is so let's save that now let's do done and now let's practice it bam there you go so we just figured that out right here so now i can turn on my crossfader effects by using the mic to talk over button it's targeting the mixer itself and it's going to turn on and off the crossfader effects. And I'm comfortable using that button for that feature because when I use microphones, I usually use a separate uh, mixer. So I think I also need to really consider about that as well because this is a really nice controller. The sound quality is really great. I've hooked it up to my sound system and I have not been disappointed. And this, does everything that I was using a second controller for. So I have to really think about whether I want to use that because I have multiple channels now and I have a mic channel where I can control not just the high and the low, but I got high, mid, low, gain, and filter 
that I can control on my mics now if I use this channel. So it's something to think about, but I'm definitely comfortable mapping the talk over button to being my crossfader effects. I'm very happy with that. So I think I am happy with my mapping so far. As I play around a little bit more, I'll get some ideas of what I want to do next, but um, I think I made some progress. This is going to be a really fun journey making my way into using DJ Pro a lot more frequently and using an iPad. So it's amazing to see how technology really changes the way we DJ and I'm going to be along for the ride and not be a hater and be open-minded. So I hope this is what you are getting from this channel and I hope you come back for more because we're going to learn more. And until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'm out. Peace.